Hey, what's up, Lightbulb Joe here. Today we are going to discuss book 61 in Arl Stein's Goosebumps original series, I Live in Your Basement. This came out November of 97, 111 pages long. This book is absolutely wild. Absolutely wild. Top three for sure. Monster Blood is my all-time favorite, but I incorporate all four of those Monster, four, Monster Blood books as one story because it's the same characters. It's just four different chapters of their same story. Um, I got to decide now if, if, if the ghost next door, which is also wild or I live in your basement is two or three. I got to, I got to really sit down and think about this. This book is wild. We're going to get into wildness, but I want to talk about the book itself. I had to get this from someone. I had to buy this from a, a seller because I didn't actually have this particular book. And this is a very hard book to find. So it was a very challenging experience getting it. And when you get used books, it's hit or miss because sometimes, most of the time, you have no idea where this book came from. You have no idea if the person before you is the reason that the book is the way it is, if the person before them, if the person before them. We've talked about a few different, I'm going to put this down. We've talked about a few different books um, that I think it's cute where you could see like the math that the kids were doing on, for homework, like on top of the cover and like their name and their phone numbers are in it and stuff like that, right? Like it's like, it was a kid's book. This book is a kid's book, but it's unfortunately a kid's book who lived in a smoker's house. And this was, he this is heavily yellowed, heavily yellowed. And the problem with this, and you'll see that it's glistening. When I started to read this book, the book was fine when I started to read it. When I started to read the book, the covers started to fall off. This literally ripped off and I had to tape it. I had to use packing tape to make sure that the brittle pages stopped fraying, stopped splitting. And then I had to do the same thing here. And then the front right part of this came off, front left part of this came off. And I was like, I had to buy this book well above retail market because it's a first edition. And I did not think it would be in such horrible quality as it actually is. And it's unfortunate because it's an incredible story with wonderful cover art. This, this living in the basement character whose name is Keith, He's, ex he's described this way, this spongy, blobby, slimy yellow thing with purple veins. Beautiful. Basement, beautiful. But the book itself, the physical book, unfortunately, is, is in bad shape. So I taped as much as I could. I'm never selling this, so it's now mine forever. I'm not going to throw it out because it's now mine forever. It's not moldy, it just smells like smoke, so how do you get rid of that? But I've never seen, and we've talked about smelly, smoky house books before, but I've never had such fragile pages and covers from books before that was this is new that was interesting anyway 111 pages one of the shortest goosebumps books one of the best goosebumps books this is so creepy it's so disturbing it's 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 a matter of reality what's real what's not real and it's wonderful the main character's name is marco he uh lives in a house with his mother and they're in his dog and marco is wait bug did i get it I got it. Those beetle things, man. Those little beetles. These keep, they keep flying around. Where did these beetles come from? It's just so strange. So, so strange. Outside, inside the house. It's just so weird, these little beetle things. Anyway, Marco. His dog's name is Tyler. Hysterical. His best friend's name is Jeremy. He goes to a softball game with Jeremy. Um, his mom is always very, very hesitant. Don't play this. You're going to hit your head. Don't do that. You're going to hurt yourself. Don't sharpen your pencils. You're going to poke your eyes out. Very high strung smother kind of character. And so Jeremy and Marco go to the uh, playground after school, have a softball game. Uh, their friend Guinevere is up at bat. She takes a swing and she goes, so does a practice swing and she smashes Marco right in the head, knocks him out, wakes up eventually. And then like things happen and he gets like a phone call on the phone in the living room, but there is no phone in the living room. And the voice on the phone saying, oh, you know, I live in your basement. My name is Keith. You know, you're going to take care of me forever. And like, he's freaking out. And you're like, what's going on? So he's starting to see things and he's starting to, to what's, what's going on? Who is this random kid, Keith, now who lives in the basement? Who's this random kid, Keith, who went up from the basement and is now living in the bedroom? Is it a ghost? A am I being haunted? What's going on? Like, why does no one believe me when I say that there's this kid who keeps calling me and says he lives in, lives in my basement? So then he wakes up. And it was a dream. And it turns out Guinevere, his friend, is actually Guinevere, his sister. Gwenny. Gwenny. 
is his sister. And so he dreamt that Gwenny was his friend, not his sister. And it turns out that Jeremy is the one who hit him in the head, not Gwenny, the friend, or Gwenny, the sister. It was actually Jeremy, the friend. And then he was in the hospital all this time. So we're in like four different dreams. We're in a dream within a dream within a dream. But while he keeps dreaming, this thing keeps peering. And it keeps, it keeps appearing in his room. And it's like, no, yeah, I'm real. No, I'm real. My name is Keith. I'm real. I'm the boy who lives in the basement. And it's freaking him out. So he cannot, I got chills just talking about this. He cannot decipher what's real and what's not real. Because when he thinks he's dreaming, he physically hurts himself, thinking it'll wake him up. But he's not asleep. He's awake and he's physically hurting himself, but he's dreaming while awake. And it's, it's terrifying. We've seen a few different movies about that. It's very scary. So his mom's concerned, take him to a doctor. And the doctor says, all right, well, we're going to examine your brain. So we're going to do the procedure. We're going to remove your whole brain. That way I could see it better. He was dreaming again. And he wakes up again. And then it's a matter of what is real? What is going on? As the story progresses, we're in the last like 10 pages of the book. 100 pages of this book is him dreaming. But what's a real dream? What's what's not a real dream? What's a real dream? What's not a real dream? And then it's revealed after the after Keith the boy turns into this yellow blob monster thing and starts to suffocate him and attack him. Just the same thing like Gwenny does, but that was a dream. But then now Keith is doing it for real. And so like, why is his mom not believing him? And then he wakes up again. And it's it's a matter of... What is going on with this kid's brain? Did he get scrambled to bits with this baseball bat to the head that he just cannot get out of this dreamscape when he's actually physically walking around and doing stuff? And then he wakes up again. But it's Keith who wakes up. Keith, who, the monster who lives in the basement, it wakes up on the floor and says, Mom, I had this horrible dream that, you know... um, that Marco got hit in the head and I was going upstairs to be friends with him to make sure he's okay. And he's, she, and his mom's like, no, 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 you're, you're a monster. You live in the basement. You can't go upstairs. You can't hang out with these humans because they will chase us away. You're the one who got hit in the head. You're the one who's been, been knocked out this whole time. And then Marco comes down the stairs and sees him in his blobby monster state. And you're like, bro, what did I just read? I was about to say, what did I just watch? I really, I don't remember if this was ever a TV show. TV episode. I know there's a new Goosebumps show coming on Disney Plus. I really hope that we get we get we get this we get this Keith character um, in I Live in Your Basement because this was so wild and it would be so terrifying um, in that zooming out, like when you're watching something and then you zoom out and it's the character wakes up startled kind of a thing, and they do that <gasps> kind of gasp when they wake up that <gasps> like did I just dream? What did I ha what happened? I would, it would, it would be so incredibly epic. I would kill to see this because it would be so incredibly epic to watch that dream within a dream, 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 within a dream. And it was actually Keith's dream the whole time. Bro, I freaked the freak out. It was so fast. It was so wonderful. It was so well done. I'm so impressed with this story and how fast this story was and how it held my attention and how it was just so epic. So epic. Absolutely love this book. We're going to do a top 10 re review at one point. We're, how are we titling that? Goosebumps top 10? Yeah, sure. Why not? Goosebumps top 10 review. Light bulb Joe. There you go. Book 61, Arl Science Goosebumps original series. I live in your basement, November 97, 111 pages long. We have one book left. We have book 62, Monster Blood 4, came out December 97. And that's it. We finished our 100... No, 100. We finished our 62 book challenge. It wasn't even a challenge. It was just I had 62 books to read because that's how many books were in the original series. 62 books from R.L. Stein's Goosebumps original series. We started in April and we're going to finish in September. The goal is to finish before Halloween. I have one book left. It is currently September 13th when I'm recording this. It's not going to take me over a month to read this one singular book, which is the fourth Monster Blood, my favorite of all of them. So I'm very excited I'm very, I'm very excited. I'm very, I'm very calm. I'm very collected. I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so, this, this was such a gorgeous story. I just wish the book wasn't falling apart, bro. I've never had a book do that before. Falling apart. I, at the seams, I literally have to tape it. Please don't smoke.
don't smoke. It doesn't do anything good for you. It doesn't do anything good for your surroundings. It kills the books. It kills the books. The books are our friends. The books give us wisdom. The books give us life. The books give us an alternate reality to challenge, to, to learn from, to, 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 to dance in. Don't harm the books. Be kind. Rewind. On to the next review. Mahalo.